from this uh, video we will start with the theories of evolution so <coughs> theories of evolution let us first discuss the main uh, headings or the theories and then we will take up all the theories individually we'll talk about what those scientists were saying and then uh, certain examples in the support of that theory and if they have certain criticisms so the first theory that we will be discussing is Lamarckism or it is known as Lamarck's theory of inheritance of acquired characters. Lamarck's theory of inheritance of acquired characters. This theory says, or according to Lamarck, whatever uh, traits or characteristics or changes an individual acquires in its life get inherited. So this is inheritance of the acquired character, the character which the organism has acquired. And as it was given by Lamarck, it is also known as Lamarckism. The second theory is Darwin's theory and it is known as Darwin's theory of natural selection. So according to Darwin, whatever changes an organism has, which we call the variations, and whichever variation is the most suitable, that is selected by the nature. The third theory that we would be discussing is mutation theory. And mutation theory is based on the principle that there is a sudden change which we call the mutation and because these mutations are inherited uh, this is what is leading to evolution and the scientist who gave this theory was Hugo de Beres. Hugo de Beres. and the fourth theory is called the modern theory or synthetic theory or neo-Darwinism. So there are three names or titles given to this theory. Modern theory or neo-Darwinism or synthetic theory of evolution. And as the name tells us, the modern theory, that means this is the theory which is the most accepted one. And this theory has been designed or put forth by combining a couple of these theories. When we come to the details, we'll talk about all these things. So we will start with Lamarck's theory of inheritance of acquired character. This theory, that is the first one which we are starting with, is... Lamarckism and the theory is the theory of theory of inheritance of acquired character and as the name tells us it was proposed by Jean Baptist de Lamarck and so the name Lamarck's theory or Lamarckism and as it says inheritance of acquired characters let us first talk about the postulates of this theory postulates means on the important points on which this theory is based first postulate says new needs according to this there is some new need or requirement which arises and due to which this takes place so let us write down the postulate then we will take uh, all the points and discuss them new needs then the second postulate says use and disuse third postulate is inheritance 
of acquired character and fourth is speciation. Now, let us take these points. What is meant by new needs? That means due to change in environmental conditions, there are some new requirements which arise. New requirement could be uh, like in case of giraffe. The smaller plants, they uh, got extinct or they were destroyed. Only tall trees remain. So now the new need was to reach up to the leaves of those taller plants. To reach there, they used their forelimbs and stretched their neck. So the organ which is more in use grows more. The organ which is no longer in use either remains the same or goes on becoming smaller and smaller. And those horse like because we know now that the giraffe originated from animals who were pretty much like a horse or a donkey kind of an animal. So when the conditions changed, they used their four legs or four limbs and neck. This little longer neck which was stretched during their lifespan and little longer four limbs. That was the character they acquired and this character was inherited to the next generation. That means the next generation uh, animals which were born, they were born with little longer forelimbs and little longer neck. This change kept on uh, accumulating and now the new species was formed which was looking so much different from the species from which it originated. Compare a horse-like animal and a giraffe-like animal. Horses have uh, the length of their all four limbs same. The neck is not that long, but in case of giraffe, the first two limbs, that is the four limbs, are exceptionally long and their neck is also exceptionally long. So the new uh, species which is formed, that comes under speciation. So basically the postulate said that there is a new need to adjust to that they, the organism would use certain organs or would not use certain organs. Whatever changes they accumulate in their body, they get inherited and because of those changes, a new species is formed. So these were the four postulates of the Lamarckism or the theory of inheritance of acquired characters. Now there are certain examples which are in support of this theory. So let us talk of examples in support because for every theory we need to talk of things which are in support of it and the points which go against the theory and then comparing these two uh, the scientists decided that this theory actually holds right or not first example as we discuss is of giraffe what happened again let us quickly go over it Giraffe originated from a horse-like organism. The new needs were that only leaves which were available for them to feed on were on a taller tree. So they need to reach there. That was the new need which developed. They used the front two limbs or four limbs and a neck. So that became longer and longer. That longer limb or neck character which they acquired got inherited and a new species of giraffe was the second example that we can take or which was taken in support of this was of snakes. Certain snakes like pythons and boas. Python and boas. They have some small remains of pelvic girdle. And pelvic girdle is the structure to which the bones of hind limb are attached. That means their ancestors must have had the hind limbs. But as they no longer use that hind limb, the hind limbs were lost and the girdle to which these limbs were attached, that is also there but it is in the form of a small structure. So the rudiment of pelvic girdle. So in case of giraffe, there was an example that showed that if you go on using a particular part of the body, it becomes bigger and bigger. 
In case of snakes or pythons, the example which was in support was saying that if you don't use it, disuse, don't use it, then that goes on becoming smaller or vestigial. Similarly, let us take a couple of more examples of aquatic birds. Aquatic birds. Like a duck. Aquatic birds do not use wings. So, wings are not used. Wings not used. And because of which they are becoming smaller or they are losing the capacity of flying or lifting the weight of the bird. So they are getting reduced. But at the same time, these birds, because they are aquatic, they have to swim in water. So between their toes, there is a flap of skin which is developing and that is known as the web. So wings are not in use, but the feet or the toes which are in use, they develop, so they are in use, they develop webs. So if you don't use it, it goes on becoming smaller and if you use certain structure, it goes on becoming stronger. This was also in support of it. One more example is of flightless birds. Flightless birds. Like ostrich. The bird is big and because it is not flying, the wings which it has, they are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So again, if you are not using a particular thing, then that structure goes on becoming smaller. So again, there is a new need. It could be change in habitat. It could be change in food habit. It could be change in the environmental condition. That new need requires use of certain organisms more than normal or disuse of certain organ uh, certain uh, organ or part once you use it it becomes bigger if you don't use it it becomes smaller that character gets inherited and the new organism which develops with all those inherited changed character is a new species coming back to the original thing lamarckism lamarck's work is basically based on a comparative study and the comparative study was between the fossils and the existing organisms. So he compared that what was there in the fossil and what is there in the present uh, day organism. So it was on you can say the study based on comparison between fossils and the living organisms. So his complete study was based on these things. One more important thing which we have to uh, understand about uh, this is there are many examples which are in support of Lamarckism but there were a couple of examples which were against Lamarckism. So that is discussed under uh, criticism of Lamarckism. So now let us talk about those examples or those experiments which disprove the theory of inheritance of acquired characters. Let us take the criticism that is the points or experiments which went against Lamarckism. So first experimental criticism which came uh, against it was from a scientist his name was August Wiseman. He performed an experiment. He is the same scientist who gave the theory of continuity of germplasm. Theory of continuity of germplasm. And he performed an ex experiment on rats. What he did, he cut the tails of these rats. And he continued this for about 20 generations. 
what exactly he started with? He started with uh, two rats, chopped off their tails, allowed those two rats to reproduce. The first generation which was born, they were born with tail. He measured the length of all the rats which were born. Then again he chopped off the tail of all those rats of the first generation allowed them to mate. Second generation was born. He measured the length of the tail of the second generation and chopped it off. Allowed them to reproduce. Third generation was born, measured the length. This he did for 20 generations. So continued this for 20 generations. What exactly he was trying to do was that According to Lamar, if a character is acquired by an organism in its life, that character gets inherited. This is what Lamarckism says. So what he was trying to show was that if uh, the tail of a rat is cut, that character becomes an acquired character. Acquired word is used when you or when an organism gets a character in its lifetime. So chopped tail was an acquired character according to him and then he allowed those cut tail rats to reproduce for 20 generations. If Lamarckism was correct, as the tail was no longer in use because they never had tail, so the, the size of the, or the length of the tail should have been reduced. But even after 20 generations, he found that the length of the tail was exactly same as that of the first generation. So this was one experiment which was against Lamarckism. The second experiment which was against Lamarckism was Pavlov's experiment. And we know Pavlov performed the experiment with dog. So whenever the dog was served the food, Pavlov used to ring the bell. So it was bell followed by the food, bell followed by the food. So bell became a stimulus for the dog to get the food. After a couple of weeks or months of training, he just rang the bell and did not give the food. But he found out that the gastric juice was already secreted. So the bell was a stimulus that the food is coming. It was an anticipation. So in anticipation, the animal had already started producing the digestive juices. So he trained a dog that way. This trained dog, when gave birth to young ones, all those young ones were to be retrained. So this learning which the dog received was an acquired character. According to Lamarck, that character should have been passed on to the next generation. But what Pavlov found out that every new generation of dogs which were born, they were to be trained from the scratch. They had no previous information or knowledge which their uh, parent generation had. So this was also against lemma. Third thing which is again a very common uh, thing based on use and disuse. A wrestler who has very well developed muscle. The wrestler's muscles are very well developed. So is the or are the children of these wrestlers born with those developed biceps and triceps or the musculature? That doesn't happen. So this is also against Lamarckism because this wrestler acquired that developed bicep or tricep due to exercises. But the babies or the children born to them, they would not have those muscles. Their muscles are going to be normal and those children, again, if they perform exercises, then only their muscles are going to grow. In case of uh, some more examples, like uh, we know that the ears are pierced to put studs or some ornamental things. Nose can be pierced. And that is again an acquired character which is known as boring of ears, boring of nose and ears. So if somebody has done this, that means they have pierced their nose or ear to put the ornaments, 
are their children going to be born with that pierced structure? That again doesn't happen. In uh, China, amongst ladies, short feet are considered as a sign of beauty. So as soon as the baby girl is born, they normally are asked to put on the shoes which have a wooden frame so that the foot doesn't grow much. So having a small foot or small feet is a sign of beauty. So in China, small feet are considered as the sign of beauty. So if a lady has small feet because she kept her feet all the time in that wooden shoe, will she be able to give birth to a baby girl with a smaller feet? The new girl, baby girl who is born, she will again be required to put on those wooden shoes. So these characters which an individual acquires are not getting inherited to the next generation. So all these points are actually going against the Lamarck's theory of inheritance of acquired characters. All this uh, research of Lamarck postulates and everything he published in his book. So the book of uh, Lamarck in which all this information was published was titled Philosophic Zoologic. That was the title of the book in which this information was published. So this is our first theory that is Lamarckism. Jean Baptiste Lamarck was the scientist who proposed it. These are the four postulates. We have certain experiments or uh, examples which go in support of Lamarckism and certain things which are against Lamarckism. Many years later, scientists uh, taking the same uh, points, adding certain evolutionary concept or ideas into it, uh, published the modified version of Lamarck or Lamarckism and it was called Neo-Lamarckism. So Neo-Lamarckism was actually Lamarckism in the light of evolution. Lamarckism in the light of evolution. And this was done by many scientists many years later but they added up the concept of evolution also. So this is what is the Lamarckism or the Lamarck's theory of inheritance of acquired character. The next theory which we will take up is of Darwin's.